So let's take a second here to talk about how we're going to work on this form. Uh, there are some really nice drag and drop features. Uh, so if, if you want to uh, reorder items, you can just click and drag, right? So ename's now been moved. Uh, you can see I have some buttons uh, here. And um, you can see I also kind of have my item types showing up. Um, hey, Dave, were there any initial questions uh, on the page designer? You bet. Uh, how did you get the, uh, excuse me, um, what's the difference between item level and region level buttons? Uh, so that is one thing that I, <laughs> it seems like so small, but it's one of my favorite changes about Apex 5. And the answer to that question is there isn't. There is absolutely no difference between the item level and page level or and region level buttons. There is just a button. So if you've ever had to go through uh, the pain of changing a pain page item button to a region item button, you no longer have to do that. A button is a button. So if I go and I click on one of these buttons, uh, one thing that I really like is that this detail menu over here on the right-hand side uh, is always going to look the same for no matter which button you click on. So the behavior of how the buttons or how a button is going to work uh, is consistent and so there's no uh, gimmicks or there's nothing um, there's nothing different about the different about the buttons and let me click save here and here you can see um, I still have the button name save uh, which is going to be uh, the request uh, when I save a button or when I click the button. But one thing that I think is uh, pretty cool is that if I go up here and I want to add a new button, oops, I want to add a page component. And actually, I think I should be able just to click here and create button. So this is an early adopter. Oop, there we go. Delete that. So it actually went ahead and created a button. It says it created it down on the below region section. I'm going to go ahead and, and move this button. I'm just going to put it in this little help section here. And so now, now I can just go ahead and uh, you know uh, save to save to button. All right. So it's pretty easy to go ahead and add another button or add components and I can drag and move this button around. And one thing that I want to point out is that these changes have not been saved yet. So if if I cancel this and run this again, notice that that save button isn't showing up yet. So all these pages or all these changes are stored here on the client. They haven't been pushed to Apex yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click run. And here it's kind of doing some processing here. And unfortunately the alert's not showing up quite as nicely as I would have hoped. But basically this is telling me that the, ch the changes have now been persisted to the database. So I should now when I click edit, I see my save to button. So that's really cool. You can kind of make changes uh, and you can actually back out of your changes. So you have like a, an undo feature, if you will. So if you're, if you're working on something and uh, things just start going awry, you can just say, you know what, hold up. Uh, I, I don't know what I did, but things are looking really weird. I'm going to back out. And um, that right there saves uh, a lot of time because if you've worked with Apex before uh, and uh, you've, you're making a lot of different changes on a page and and, and uh, things start, uh, the dots aren't connecting as, as you thought they would. Um, it's Sometimes it's nice to be able to just back up and say, hold on, let me start over. So let me go back to editing. And uh, so I also just want to point out 
Um, oops, sorry, I want to go to page three. One thing that's really cool, <laughs> really, really cool about this is the page designer is that if you've ever had to convert uh, an automated row fetch and row processing to be a custom PL SQL logic, one thing that you've had to do is you'd had to go into each item and you have to change the source from being a database column to be static assignment. And um, you can do a pretty good job uh, in some of the, uh, the utility reports at kind of the workspace or page level uh, to kind of be able to edit multiple items at the same time. Well, you don't have to leave the page anymore to do those types of really cool things. So what I can do is I'm going to select the emp no item and I'm going to hold shift and click the depth no item. And I have now selected all of these items. Well, if you look over here on the right hand side, you can see all these different properties um, that can be uh, modified. Uh, I would uh, avoid um, the blue stuff uh, at wherever possible because, you know, and actually I don't even know if it'll let you update this because uh, sequence is something that needs to be unique. Uh, database column, you're likely not going to be setting all these to the same database column. However, you do want to change the type to static value. So here you can see um, I'm able, I updated all of these items at the same time. And you also see that they immediately turned red. So let me go here. So here it's telling me that the page item P3 up no source static value is required. Right? So it is going to bark at me. Let me go back, set this to database column. Oops, static value. And then uh, I can modify uh, these other details here. So point being is that I can very quickly get to changing some of the properties on multiple items at the same time. If I do something that is maybe going to break my application or break my page, uh, Apex will try to warn me as best it can over here in messages. Um, if for whatever reason uh, I want to try to find something on my page, uh, previously in the upper right hand corner uh, there used to be a um, there used to be a search box that you could use 